Hello and welcome to the Music Works podcast. I'm Katie Beardsworth, Director and Founder of Polyphony Arts and today I'm delighted to welcome Gabriella De Laccio. Gabriella is a fantastic musician in her own right but drawing on her own experience seeing how little women are represented in music, especially when it comes to programming the music of female composers, she began Donne, Women in Music, to promote female musicians both historic and current. As Gabriella writes, our main goal is to celebrate, advance and amplify women in music so that they are seen, heard and appreciated for their talent, so they can leave a legacy of inspiration for future generations. Hers has been an incredible journey and this is a huge topic. Uh, we only touch on some of the issues out there, but I know this episode is going to give us some valuable insights into what is a key area in the work being done in our industry to promote true diversity. But first, here's a message from our sponsor. Music Works was generously supported by Allianz Musical Insurance, the UK's number one musical instrument insurer, serving the music community since 1960. If these difficult times have shown us anything, it's that life can be unpredictable. Allianz offer cover for all types of instruments and musical equipment, protecting you against accidental damage, loss, theft and more. Plus, every Allianz Music policy now includes free legal assistance and support so you can protect yourself both as a musician and in your personal life. Now, if the worst happens, you won't be left out of pocket and you can get back to doing what you do best. To find out more about this and Allianz's special online offer of two months free cover, go to alliancemusic.co.uk. Allianz, proud to be the insurer of choice for over 70,000 musicians. And now let's go over to the Music Works studio where Gabriella is waiting to talk to us. Welcome, Gabriella. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow, well, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. It's so wonderful to be chatting with you, Katie. Yeah, wonderful. I've been looking forward to this interview for a while. Um, so Why? this is Gabriella De Laccio, a soprano and founder of Donne. Um, so without further ado, please do tell us what Donne is. <laughs> Yes, I will tell you about the name first, because lots of people ask me. So donne means women in Italian, and I am half Brazilian, half Italian, and I wanted to make a an homage to to being part of who I am as well on the title, mm -hmm. and also to connect with the world of classical music and its Italian inheritance. But um, it everything started. I have to be very honest. I always say this almost by an accident. I um, I grew up in, but it's very connected with my personal story because I grew up in the south of Brazil in a very small town with no connections with you know classical music or or any role models that I could actually talk to or or and I had and I had my dreams my dreams to have a career in this beautiful world being a singer um, and coming to Europe and having an international career uh, I had one thing on my on my side, which was my mom, because my mom is a dreamer uh, and a woman who never really put any barriers to what we could dream, uh, and to the point of being delusional almost. You know, if you could <laughs> see where, <laughs> if you could see where I grew up, and then a tiny town with no money. My dad was a car mechanic, and, and it's sort of okay. Well, are we gonna do this? But anyway, so she told me endless stories of me and my sister uh, of men who succeeded in spite of difficulties like Beethoven or Einstein or Walt Disney who was bankrupted how many times and and I, I, I have to be very honest those dreams they they really nurtured me and they made me believe that even if I couldn't see one near me maybe I could become one of those classical singers that I wanted to become or follow this career and this was um, fundamental for me L having these role models although they were men but to make me believe I could do it um, and this is a big part of who I am today uh, to you know if you you don't believe um, it doesn't have to be easy or it doesn't have to be done before. You can be the first one. I believe that. And I think uh, this is 
very, very strong inside me. But I came here and I went to the Royal College of Music. I didn't fit in like anything that you can possibly imagine. I kissed all my teachers on my first lesson. I, uh, you know, <laughs> I tried to blend in. I tried to become more European. I tried to sound more English. All the mistakes you can try to do to <laughs> kill your artistic um, individuality, I guess, right? <laughs> Right. And, uh, and I did suffer some prejudice, um, you know, the usual for being a woman sometimes, the patronizing, some more from some people for being a foreigner from a third world country. But I, as a singer, you know, we don't feel the inequality so much in terms of getting work, because there's always parts for women uh, as soloists, uh, kind of equally as men. So I just accepted that that's how the um, industry was. Uh, there were more men in the industry than me. I didn't even think about it. And then um, around 2014, I was hired to sing um, many concerts inspired by Shakespeare for 2015. And it was a celebration. And I had a bit more freedom on researching repertoire to include as many works with text by Shakespeare. And I think it was then that I started to find one piece here, one piece there by these women, you know, and I was like, what's going on? Who else? And then they were all brilliant. And I put pretty much as many as I could in the, in the programs. But that kind of just started this little, what's happening? And then almost by chance, I don't believe it was by chance, um, I started to research a bit more and I found the Encyclopedia of Women Composers by Aaron Cohen, the, the big famous one, two volumes of 6,000 women done in the 80s on the second hand shop in London. You know, the one under the bridge at South Bank, the one that oh, you have yeah. all the books. Yeah. And then well, I saw that. Thing. Yeah, and I saw that, and I, I and I thought six thousand women. <laughs> no, uh, and my first initial thought was really, uh, this is just a list, is a compilation of names, right? Because we have this unconscious bias, right? Of, you know, if if the music didn't make it, is because if the quality wasn't good. So I, I was very a result of that, uh, you know that unconscious bias and I thought that was the case so I start researching and I start listening and I start being abs you know very surprised uh, happily surprised and shocked of so many amazing women that I never heard of in all my years as a student as a performer with colleagues and I honestly thought I was the only one who didn't know I did <laughs> I thought I was alone. I thought everybody knows I missed an important lesson at the Royal College of Music one of those days and I just missed it. And then the more I start talking to, to colleagues and people and conductors and, and I started to realize that what's going on? Everybody's ignorant <laughs> in, a, in a nice way, kind of ignorance mm -hmm. or lack of information. And And okay, this started to build up and 2016, 17, I was just trying to do my part, but I came to a point when I felt like it's not enough. I want to do something to share with more people because I discovered that there were people trying to do this for more than 40 years. I'm not the first one, far from it. Uh, but the difference was these people were musicologists, they were researchers, they were doing PhDs. And the information was either too long or uh, too in-depth. And, and I'm not an academic. I'm a performer. My, my, my relationship with music is trying to bring people closer to what I do and communicate. So I decided I wanted to do that with that list of 6,000 women. So I started a website myself, uh, which I did with my limited knowledge of Adobe Dreamweaver. And the first step was to create the call, what I call the big list, which for me was the big list of women composers. And I listed all of the ones I could find uh, that had links online. 
from the encyclopedia initially. Uh, and then I created some other pages around, interviewed some living composers, like Rachel Portman was the first one I interviewed, which was, she was super kind to talk to me and, and some others. And I got a, a small funding from the Arts Council to record five albums by women. And that for me was kind of, okay, this is it. I will do this. Start this website, International Women's Day 2018. A lot of work, you know, mm. parallel with my singing career. Press, send, that's it. Oh, it's gone. I've done my bit. <laughs> that, was yeah. that was all it was supposed to be. Um, what I didn't expect was you know, the reaction that would have, uh, the impact it would have on women all over the world who were feeling invisible. Because just a few months after I launched the website, I also launched the, the small research I've done on 15 orchestras around the world. And The Guardian picked it up uh, because the results were bad and published. And, uh, and I think it was that day when that article went around the world that Donne became known by all these women. And then I started to receive emails and messages and thanking me and can you add my name to the list? Uh, I am a one woman in Australia giving you a one woman ovation, standing ovation. And, you oh. know, and since, yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> And then, and that was it. So the, the, you know, that moment for me, it, it was almost unbelievable because I was, I've done nothing. I just did a website. <laughs> you know, there are people researching and, and actually doing these things, but somehow it worked. And, and the rest, uh, I can tell you, the rest is history because since then uh, that has never been, not been one single day that I don't, think of what else I can do or if I what else can I be doing who else can I contact or what else that needs to be done and I will stop talking now because otherwise you can't ask me any questions my husband always says give people the chance to ask you questions no it's all good you can you know you can do the whole episode without questions that's no problem at all <laughs> you're answering them all before I can ask them anyway which is wonderful um it, such a an incredible impact and that must have been a great moment to uh, to have that recognition for you've done it down a bit but it's still a lot of hard work and um, like you say um it sits alongside the need for research doesn't it you know deeper research and writing longer scholarly yeah. articles and things like that absolutely has a place but so does very much bringing it to people who yeah, aren't in that sphere what, you know what, what what we don't i i never wanted this to be within the world of classical music only i mm. for me because inspiration is inspiration and i think we have to inspire people to become anything they want to become and i think for me what really hit me was the stories of these women you know, the women that we don't talk about, we don't learn about in school, you know. Nobody told me about Hildegard von Bingen building a monastery of herself and being advisors to popes and kings and in the medieval times. I mean, who, and, you know, in the time when women were almost nothing uh, in terms of being respected. And nobody told me Barbara Strozzi was the most successful artist in Venice to sell, selling her music more than Monteverdi. Nobody told me that the Fr Francesca Caccini was part of this group of amazing, powerful women in the Medici, and she was the most well-paid musician ever in the court. And so, so <laughs> or, and then I can go on and on and on. Absolutely, the great stories. Uh, and so, um, so the, obviously you have the website and the, the reach of that and the list. So what else does Donne do? Yeah, so uh, it's been a. Um, well, I find like Donna now is is more like a, a connector of a, a, a million different things. It's, mm. it's, it, it, I always wanted to do more. So we have the the website, and the website has the big list, and the big list is almost like our own mini Wikipedia of women, uh, where you can search by country by period by genre is not uh, the most perfect search engine but it helps a lot to narrow down 
uh, and that list keeps um, being updated daily because women send their um, information. Uh, we also keep funding more commissions, so I'm always uh, creating more applications to fund more women and more recordings. Uh, we have a lot of multimedia things that can be used, like the educational videos. Uh, there are playlists on YouTube. Uh, now, recently, we uh, Apple invited us to be uh, curators for them. So now we are cre creating playlists specifically for Apple playlists. We have our own page there, you know, together with Gramophone and Carnegie Hall and and Metropolitan Opera House, but we are the only ones uh, with a focus on equality, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, what else do we do? <laughs> wow. Um, so that, I mean, that is a huge achievement though, to be, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's wonderful to be uh, asked to do that for Apple. I'm really surprised to hear that you're the only curators that have a, a focus on equality though. Um, but that aside, um, yeah, what, what, yeah, what, what mean, a mouthpiece I, for what you do. Yes, I mean, I think mm. uh, Apple has 70 million subscribers or something like that. Uh, and of course, uh, you can't deny that being able to reach that audience uh, has to, you know, has to make an impact. Of course, it's not going to happen, you know, quickly. But slowly, uh, it only started end of November. So um, we and we are adding more playlists now this month, coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a very important achievement. So I don't know how I've got a couple of questions about how people can interact with these things. So um, how do you find Donne's playlists on Apple Music if you go like on the app? Oh yeah. So you type on the search. You type Donne foundation yeah and then that should do right. uh there is a link on our website um the playlists are called her music so i don't know actually i need to, to try and search by that but i tried to do donne foundation on the search and that goes to our page directly but on our website you have a direct link and i can share with you here as well for later yeah we want. can put it in the in the show notes that'd be great and you also mentioned that you're adding to the database and to the big list every day. How do people send in information for that? So on the website, again, there is a link that says uh, join the big list. So people click there, composers will click there and they fill up um, a, like a, a Google form or a similar thing. And that comes mm -hmm. straight to, to me, us, to, to be approved uh, to enter. And then in a couple of days, uh, it should be there. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit longer because I'm still running this alone. So it takes, depends on how fast I can do it. But gosh, what an enormous amount to achieve on your own. <laughs> well, yes, if I look, if I look back, I, I actually don't know how I do it. And, and I think, uh, but it, it, it makes me believe that how possible it is that for, I'm very passionate and I think I don't I don't have a way back for me now. I can't unsee what I've seen. And I think that's why I talk down on sometimes on the achievements because I find them small, but I know how significant they are. I only find them small because I know the size of the problem. I look at the size of the problem closely. But and then so you say, oh, you get a, a a curator's page on Apple Music. I feel like yes, and I feel like okay, yeah. But that's not solving the problem. But I know that it's contributing to it, and I have to acknowledge that. But I want the big change, and um, I got quite impatient with the years, and I actually don't understand why change has to be slow. I don't accept that argument. I think mm. if people want to change, they will change tomorrow, you know. Next season of orchestras, done. Next season, not next release is being recorded by every label. Create a, your internal rule, done. That's it. Mm, <laughs> you know, know. Right. What's, um, what, so what is your big, what would be big change? What would feel like, you know, 
the merest of Apple Music curation aside, what would be the big change? I think I think people have to, you know, by people I mean all of us. Uh, let's start with the big organizations. So I think the big organizations have more power and more, and therefore they should be called to 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 have a stronger impact because they are the ones with more funding. So I think they should have internal rules to prioritize diversity and equality. So you're doing a, a season, think about it. Don't just program all the same stuff, but know why you're doing it. You know, you need to feel it. You need to know that. Uh, I saw a wonderful TikTok the other day, which we're going to post on Donny soon, about this girl in Brazil. I can't remember where in Brazil. And she's watching the new Disney movie Encanto, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. And she, we you're going to cry our... when you see it. She yeah. looks at uh, her mom caught her looking at the TV and she says, Mom, I'm on TV. Oh. And then she faces her mom in front of the TV and she has big glasses. And, and, and her mom was like, what? It's me. And, and, and oh. you're just like, oh, that's it. You know, what else do you want? What else can you expect? You know, you see any any child going to a concert hall or a stage or a, or a theater or a performance and believe they can do it. How much talent that we are not even allowing to be born, so if I can phrase this properly. And I think this hurts me the most because we don't, we will never know. So organizations should definitely have this passion. We performers, I think this is it. We have to include every concert, if we can, include as many uh, diverse composers and as you can. Sometimes it's not up to us, I know, but you know, try at least. You know, uh, spend some time researching more repertoire for you to play as an encore, uh, and 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 most importantly, just don't play it. Don't just play it. Tell the story. Stories are the things that hook people. Stories are the things that give some context. Uh, if you're playing, uh, I'm going to sing this song. This song was written by this Brazilian composer who uh, left her husband when he asked her to choose between him or music. And then she was a pioneer in Brazil. Blah, blah, blah. And, and people go like, wow, I want to know more about that. Because this is our job. We need to inspire the curiosity on people. Because this is the seed that actually takes things forward. That's why I don't like, oh, yeah, we put one music by a woman and it's five minutes and the whole program is an hour and a half. And, but we didn't say anything about her. Or, and I yeah. think uh, as audiences, I think we also have to, to be more adventurous and try to pick concerts or performances that actually are inclusive of new things. And if they are not, call out on the your favorite orchestra or your radio station or, you know, make a thing, do a Twitter post. Say, hey, how about listen to music by XYZ? We all have a, a part to play in this uh, if we want uh, this to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, another, um, Another thing that you've influenced, I believe, is the um, the new Scala Radio um, Women's the Station. The Scala Radio Women's yeah. Station. Yeah, Scala, we, we had a partnership last year, which was really interesting because um, they asked me to introduce 30 pieces by women that were never played. I mean, 30, 30 women, actually, 30 women that they never played. And it was a lot of... Uh, fun for me to to research and find because they they have played quite a few in the, the most popular ones and to find uh 30 new ones uh and give them that airspace which is you know so important for for any composer and performer and i think as a result of that because i i want to believe it got uh it was very very positive of course it was, they they got inspired to start this new station. Uh, it's a 24 hours. Uh, it's on their online on demand 
station like they have many other stations like only jazz only this but now they have this um, and i hope this will be uh, i have mixed feelings about uh, isolating women I, I would prefer adding them fluidly to everything <laughs> yeah uh, but at the same time i think it's very nice to have so people because many people think oh is there enough repertoire for a radio station only with music by women and then go yes there is one station already exists so go there and listen so i think it's very very important for that fact only so people can realize oh actually there is enough music yeah that's that's interesting isn't it so i had this um i agree and it's it's sort of part of rebalancing things isn't it so in an ideal world yes everything would be completely integrated but given that it hasn't been for so long there is an amount of rebalancing that needs to be done and um i do feel so i had this debate recently with somebody with another singer about um there's a book called something like songs by women composers you know like an anthology um and I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's a shame it's not just called Songs by Composers. <laughs> but then the thing is, is that we're all existing people with existing experiences of the repertoire. And actually, if you're a singer and you don't know any music by women, what you actually really need is a book of music yeah. by women. Because obviously, if you wanted to buy a book that was sort of like at least 50% Schubert, you probably didn't need that because you already have it. Yes. Um, so I do think, I mean, yeah, I see the debate definitely. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's an ongoing. And, and I, I Ideally, uh, projects like Donne wouldn't have to exist, uh, well, but it, they do. They have mm-hmm. to exist, and and uh, so I have a project that is completely focused on women or and on anyone who identifies as women. Uh, and I wish I didn't have to exist, but we we really do. <laughs> yeah. Well, absolutely, and um, really is needed, and I think the impact of that is is very clear. Um, so, thank you for coming and sharing your um, your wins with us, which I think are huge. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, um, you mentioned earlier some ways um, that people can can get involved and get listed on Donne, but could you just uh, could you summarize for our listeners how they can engage with you and how they can get involved? Sure, of course. I think the the well. With the website, there are many ways to engage. And just, just to recap, composers, if you're not on the big list, just go there and there is a thing called join the big list. And please join and share amongst colleagues that you know who might not be there because we really want to increase the number of women there. Uh, for the general public, I think the best way, uh, apart from using the playlists and connecting with the website this way and um, it would be for you to connect with us on social media and share the content we share uh, because some, of course donations are super welcome but the most important thing is to for, for us is to get more people sharing that we exist and what is it that we're trying to do because we might reach more and more people and this is what we're trying to do uh, so please connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you prefer uh, send your suggestions and we we have a very good connection with on social media with the community all over the world and it's very nice to hear from them and I think this is how we we learn as well from from more composers and more things we can do and of course now we have our products yes that you okay. can buy and everything you buy sorry all the money goes back to Donne and to support women so there are posters uh, there's a calendar there's some mugs and there will be a, a poster for schools very soon so uh everything you do is is all the money comes back to support more women so yeah really beautiful for anyone listening on audio rather than watching on video we had a little demo there of some of the mugs they are so beautiful so yeah do go on oh, yes yeah, so i'm showing the mug they have, <laughs> they have they have quotes uh, many of them so this one is from sappho uh, saying someone I tell you in another time will remember us we are oppressed by fears of oblivion so here we go that's a Sappho mug for you yeah oh thank you so much thank you thank you so much Gabriella for talking to us today um the movement to promote women in music has made such great strides over recent years but as you say there's such a lot of work still to be done and Definitely. thanks to movements like Donne, I know we can be confident that we'll be achieving more and more 
to ensure female composers, for example, both living and past, will find better representation on programming across all aspects of music. Um, so just to sum up, if you want to find out more listeners about the work of Gabriella and Donne, you can find it here at donne.org.uk and gabrielladilaccio.com. Gabriella, it's been a great privilege to have you as our guest on Music Works, and I'm sure this will be the last time we find ourselves discussing no, no. women in music. <laughs> Thank not. you so much. Yeah, well, <laughs> <Thank> indeed. <you. laughs> Thank That's you. That's all we have to do. Thank you. Thank you Absolutely. very much for everybody listening as well. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Music Works podcast. If you've enjoyed this conversation, please subscribe, check out our other great episodes, and even better, leave us a review. You can also sign up to our mailing list at www.polyphonyarts.com forward slash mailing dash list for updates and news about what Polyphony Arts is up to for all you classical music folk out there. You can find more information in the show notes as well. Meanwhile, I'm Katie Beardsworth and I look forward to sharing with you the next great episode of Music Works. Music Works is generously supported by Allianz Musical Insurance, the UK's number one musical instrument insurer. Allianz Music Insurance, serving the music community since 1960, proud to be the insurer of choice for over 70,000 musicians. Music Works is a Polyphony Arts production. Thank you for listening. Thank you.